What's up guys? Welcome to another new year, another new decade, another new everything. And with that, why would we want to be in that same location? We can be somewhere totally new, totally exciting for the new decade. Welcome to Greece. Not Greece. Welcome to Nashville, guys. So one of the most important things is always being able to adapt. So once we're entering in this new year, new decade, it's important that we're also adapting on our ticket buying skills. So I wanna talk about a couple different ways you can go ahead and buy tickets in 2020 so that you are always gonna get the best tickets possible. But before we do that, we gotta get somewhere a bit less rainy, a bit less wet. It is like super gross. So actually last time I was out here in Nashville, same thing happened, pouring rain. Uh, I did run outside though. I, I think I was slightly crazy, but I wouldn't worry about it. Anyway, let's get out of here. Rain, 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 rain. Ah, oh, it's gross, it's gross. First and foremost, the most important thing you need to know for buying tickets in 2020, it's actually knowing how to use the Ticketmaster Verified Fan Preset. Definitely the number one thing you need to know. One of those things that if you haven't gotten used to it by now, you really need to learn because it's definitely something that's not going away. Every single year, they keep adding more and more events to the Ticketmaster Verified Fan pre-sale. So it's very important that you actually learn how they work and how to make sure you get your tickets. So I actually have a video on it already. You can go ahead, click up here, take a look at it, get yourself familiar with it. It's gonna be key for buying those tickets in 2020. Number two, the next thing you need to know about getting tickets in 2020 is by joining fan clubs. What do I mean by that? Basically, it's all about buying those tickets through a fan club because they get access to special pre-sales that are generally in advance of everything else. If you don't know if a fan club exists, just go to their website for the specific artist or band. Uh, go ahead, just kind of play around in there, take a look. There's quite a few of them out there. Not everyone has one. Some of them are paid, some of them are free. It really depends on each individual artist, but what you need to do is make sure that you're subscribed to their various fan clubs and newsletters. Anything that gets you more information about what's going on with them so that you can get access first. Let's continue this in a moment. Please hold. Let's get out of here. So number three and number four, they're actually super related, so we're gonna do them together. So number three is actually geolocated ticket purchases. Anytime tickets are being bought for a specific event, what they might do is actually limit who can actually buy these tickets. So they'll limit it either by the billing zip code or by actual states that are nearby for the venue itself. So with the Nashville Predators, they limit purchases to the Nashville and you know Tennessee area. And then you'll actually see it a lot with different Broadway productions, specifically with Hamilton, I've been seeing it quite a bit. So if you're trying to buy tickets in a different state, different country, basically different location. If you're not from that specific location, they might actually cancel your order completely because you're not from that specific area. They're trying to make sure that those residents or people who are from that area are actually the ones who are able to buy those tickets. Now, with that being said, if you are from out of state, out of town, out of the country, there is another way of you still getting these tickets and that's through number four, will call. So what they might do is they'll still allow others to actually go ahead, try and buy these tickets if they're not from that specific region, but if you are not from that region, they're actually gonna then force those tickets to be held at will call, basically meaning you won't be able to get those tickets until you actually show up, you know, an hour, two hours, this day of the event itself. This is really to help prevent resale of tickets, so that's kind of their control around it. Speaking of will call, also, you'll find that a lot of events, the actual prime seats, the best seats in the house, they're actually all tied to Will Call itself. 
what you'll find is that a lot of the seats there, they're trying to make sure that they don't get into the hands of brokers for the purpose of resale. So what they're going to do is actually hold a lot of these tickets at the will call box office themselves, forcing people to actually show up to the event to be able to pick up those tickets. Example of this, I actually just bought some tickets to go see Trevor Noah in September. All the floor seats, the entire floor section was all held in will call, basically forcing everyone to show up to the event on the day of to be able to pick up their tickets. Where are my seats located? They're located in the first row, right in the front, facing up. I can basically see him sweat. That's how close I'm going to be, and it's all because those tickets are being held at Will Call. Oh, finally back home. Time to talk about our final, last thing you need to know for buying tickets in 2020. Patience. Being patient. Being able to take the time and wait before you actually buy those tickets because sometimes it's just not worth you know getting all caught up in the emotion the excitement and things are going on sale you gotta buy it now 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 I gotta do it now it's okay to just wait especially if you're buying them on the resale market you don't want to be buying them basically the day they go on sale the day the first pre-sale happens you can wait because there's always going to be more tickets that are coming onto the market. Uh, you know, some people, they don't list their tickets right away. Some people, they have to go visit their friends or someone gets sick, can't go to the event, so more tickets show up all the time. As the event gets closer, the box office always releases extra tickets, production holds, things that are just being generally held back. So those are another option for you. And then just the generic buying last minute. You have all these different strategies, all these different tips, all these different ways of actually being able to save yourself some money. So don't feel like you have to be pressured to buy those tickets immediately to make sure you get them, you can just wait. Just patience, patience. So yeah, a little patience, it can go a long way. All right, I think that kind of covers everything for buying tickets in 2020 and beyond. Now, don't forget to subscribe. Tons of great content coming up. I'm gonna make sure that you guys become the best ticket buyers out there in the world. And I'll see you guys next time. Look at this. I was walking and I... 10 foot cable, okay? 10 feet is supposed to be the most amazing thing ever until you do something like this. Now we have to replace this because I have a 4% battery. I don't know if we're gonna make it. Just got to Walmart, it should be fine. Funny story to tell you though, when I get back. <sighs> we got problems. As I showed you guys, I destroyed the old one, my 10 foot cable, my backup 10 foot cable. But when I did it, because I was in such a panic and such a rush because my battery was about to die, I bought... I bought a cable, see? You know? Genius, genius like a genius would buy a cable. Um, but then, see this? See this thing? Lightning cable. See this thing? Not lightning cable. And then, just to top it all off, remember it, as I was at Walmart leaving, that I had something in my bag, because I, being the ever so wonderfully packed traveler, had an extra cable in my bag. So, you know, awesome. All right, so it's the next morning. I'm off the airport in a couple hours, but remember how I said that I solved the day because I actually had a cable back in my bag, ready for us, ready for me to be able to use so that I could, you know, charge the phone? Well, went into my bag. Found the cable, and then when I tried to plug it in, that's when I realized it is, I don't know if you can tell, but basically this thing here, it's broken. Like, the, the cable, it's busted. So phone, dead. Cable, useless. Other cable, also useless. I, I don't know. Time to give up, time to go home. That's the only solution.